Another tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. A is one way or another. As we bring you The Easy Victim, written especially for suspense by Harold Huber. Here. Waiting for you, Mr. Ames. In my living room? How did you get into my house? Easy, Mr. Ames. Through that French window. Not hard, if you know how. Well, how have you been, Mr. Ames? How are things with you? I don't like this. I don't like it at all. Breaking in here without so much as... You've no right to Of do... course not. The man's home is his castle. But we haven't heard from you in a while, so Big Tony thought I ought to remind you. And considering what I had to remind you of, this seemed the nicest way. Quiet. Private. Nicest for everybody, including you, you see? Now, look here. I took a liberty. And I'm sorry I startled you. <laughs> no, let's let it go at that, eh? A lovely place you have here. I've been admiring your taste. Very flattering. Well, what do you want? Want? <laughs> My money, Mr. Ames. Only money. We have your IOU for the 10000 you lost at our dice table. But that's all we have. So how about... Forgive my bluntness. Paying up? I can't. Not now. I told Tony. Sure, I... a couple of weeks ago you told him. Well, nothing's changed since then. My business has been terrible. This house is mortgaged to the hilt. I'm short of cash. I, I, I tried to borrow the money, but I just haven't been able to. Can't you understand? Of course we can. These things happen sometimes to the nicest people. Like you. Oh, believe me, I, I hated having to tell you this. Naturally, you're a gentleman, Mr. A. Well, it's the last thing I could have anticipated. These reverses were sudden. And unexpected. I don't doubt that for a minute. So you see how it is with me. Sure. But, Mr. Ames, you have to see how it is with us. When we lose, we pay. So when you lose, you pay. It has to be that way, right? Well, at the time I gave you that I owe you... You I... expected to be able to redeem it, sure. Only trouble is you haven't. I love that tie you're wearing. It's beautiful. I need more time. Well, we can't extend credit too long. It makes a bad precedent. The business we're in, we can't sue. Courts don't recognize gambling debts. So we have to use other methods to demonstrate that money owing to us has to be paid. We regret the necessity, but we have to make it crystal clear. All right, but you can't get blood out of a stone. We have no intention of getting blood out of a stone. On the other no, hand... Never, never mind. I don't really need a blueprint. Good. It's a pleasure to deal with you, Mr. Ames. But you don't actually want to kill me. Please, Mr. Ames, that word. It's painful. Let's not say it aloud. A corpse can never pay. And as long as I'm alive, there's a chance that I can. I'm inclined to agree, provided... Provided what? That you accept a basic principle. Well, what principle? Well, when you can't get money any other way, you have to marry it. Marry it? Mm-hmm. You're a bachelor, handsome, excellent background, impressive personality. Marry it, Mr. Ames. Just like that? Look, Mr. Ames, we know you frequently spent holidays at the Bell Point Hotel. The Bell Point's famous as a place where, where people find romance. It's full of widows, comfortably endowed, who want to marry again. Come there in hope of finding a husband. Now, wait a minute. We also know you spent a lot of time with a lady you met up there. A widow. Named Ella Jason. For instance, Mrs. Her... Jason and I are just acquaintances. I just happened to meet her at the hotel. Fine for an occasional date, but that's all. She's very attractive, not a bit hard to We're take. just friends, I tell you. I'm not in love with her. Besides, I don't want to marry. You don't have a choice. But to marry someone who means nothing to me except... Oh, no. Even if I could do as you say. Once I'd paid you, I could never go on living with a wife I don't love. I'd have to get free to get rid of her. If necessary, I... Please, I... please, Mr. Ames, again, I beg of you, do not mention that painful word aloud. It's better I don't hear what you have in mind. But, Mr. Ames, we're realists. We do what we must, even when it's painful. So once you pay us, if you feel a terrible necessity to get rid of her, remember, necessity is the mother of invention. <laughs> Hello? Yes, this is 
is Bungalow D. This is Mrs. Jason. What? Mr. Ames, what a delightful surprise. Well, I'm fine, thank you. Where are you calling from? Here at the hotel. How wonderful. Oh, of course, Mr. Ames. Oh, Mr. Ames, really? <laughs> Oh, please, Mr. Ames, you almost embarrass me. I mean, after all, it is a switchboard. <laughs> well, yes, I did miss you. Mm-hmm. You did too, really? Well, of course I'm glad. <laughs> oh, dinner tonight? Well, I, I did have a tentative appointment. I really shouldn't... Well, no, I'd never in the world want you to feel that way. <laughs> Well, we can't have that, can we? Well, I'll make an excuse. The tentative appointment is very nice, you'll understand. Uh, but just to be sure we don't hurt his feelings, let's dine away from here tonight. No, 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 no. You decide on the place, Mr. Ed. Time, whatever's agreeable to you. You decide, Mr. Ames, and I'll be ready. was delicious. I thank you so much, Miss Rain. Oh, I thank you. You ordered so well, so expertly. Oh, you really think so? Oh, yes. And it's so nice, positively luxurious for me to be able to let someone else take responsibility, <laughs> even if it's just a matter of ordering dinner. Well, this is a very good place. It's hard to make a mistake here. Oh, if I'd ordered, I'm sure I'd have made mistakes. I always left such things to Henry. Henry was wonderful, so efficient. I simply relied upon him for everything. Your husband? <laughs> yes. My husband he used to tease me, oh, very, very gently, because I was so dependent, making any kind of decision flusters me. <laughs> Must seem silly to a man like you. You're so poised, so obviously competent, like Henry. In fact, in many ways, you remind me of him. <laughs> me, I'm, I'm even afraid of the waiter. Isn't that ridiculous? <laughs> oh. Oh, tell me, you're not as shy in handling real business affairs as you are in... Uh... Ordering from a waiter. Oh, I'm worse. I'm always bewildered. Well, in that case, I <laughs> hope Henry left you a, a well-ordered estate. Oh, perfectly. Henry was so provident. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. But there are occasional business decisions. Well, to be expected. Any estate, any substantial estate, it is uh, uh, fairly substantial, I imagine. Yes. Well, then you must expect an occasional problem. But uh, there must be some member of your family who can advise you. Oh, I've almost no family, just my nephew Herbert. I'm quite alone. Oh. Oh, now, really, Mr. Ames, I'm appalled. You'll soon be convinced I'm a total featherhead and a bore, and you'll never want to see me again. Oh, Mrs. Jason, you can't begin to know how wrong you are. In fact, you couldn't be wronger if you tried. Well, that's very sweet. But now, another word about me. I want to hear about you. What kept you in town last week? Business. Oh, dear. Don't tell me details. I wouldn't understand. But was it successful? Uh, a decision was made. A decision involving method of procedure. At this point, I'm convinced the method will be very, very successful, Mrs. Jason. Well, we're being positively stuffy. Call me Ella. <laughs> Thank you, Ella. You're welcome, Arthur. I feel like dancing. I feel like dancing with a beautiful woman. Will you dance with me, Ella? Oh! I'd love to. Tonight I feel very much like dancing, Arthur. And I say that you are making a mistake, Aunt Ella. A bad mistake. You're going into this without... Oh, you're saying, I assure you, I am not a child. I know what I'm doing. I can't know. You don't know enough about him. I know all I need to know. Her. Now, look, ever since you phoned me, I have been worried. Would I have rushed here to the hotel? Would I interfere like this if I weren't convinced that you've been hasty? I'm sure you mean well, Herbert, but you're very young. Bear in mind, I am ten years older than you, and I am not altogether without experience Look, here. I understand, but I have been doing some research on Mr. Ames. Research? Have... <laughs> you sound so businesslike. No, no, please, dear. please. It's all right, it's charming. You are so young. Will you listen to me? I found out things that you should no, know. No, Herbert, that will do. You couldn't have found out anything of real importance that I don't know. 
woman's instinct, Herbert. In a matter like this, trust a woman's instinct. Yes, but I prefer facts. Arthur Ames and I will be married tomorrow. That is a fact. And you'll see, dear, everything will be perfect. Aunt Ella, I'm surprised at you. You can't afford to be wrong in a marriage. And I'm not. So if you'll For all me... you know, if he's what I think he is, he may be dangerous to you. Dangerous to me? Oh, Herbert, my dear, dangerous. Really, really, darling, that is funny. That is positively funny. But you shouldn't come here to the house. I couldn't help it. You didn't come to us. But I haven't got the money yet. You've got to be patient. Mr. Ames, you're kicking that word to death. What do you think we've been? Look, I tell you, you've got to leave before my wife comes in. Mr. Ames, I like you very much. I hate to have to tell you, but Big Tony is getting weary of waiting. So you see... No, no, I'll manage to pay somehow. A little more time. But Mrs. Ames will be in soon enough. You're telling me she's the suspicious type? Well, of course not. You know better. So why so worried about her seeing me? You'd think of something to say. Now you're sure she won't give you the money? I can't ask her for it. I don't know how to get it. Mr. Ames, you're in trouble. Unless... Yes? Unless you can find a way to make Mrs. Ames pay off. Say, you're not getting a conscience about her, are you? Are you being funny? What do you expect me to do? Work it out. We want that money a week from today. Or at least a guarantee that the money will be paid. A believable guarantee. If we don't... Stop get... it! I'm trying. You can't imagine how bad I feel to tell you that that's not enough. Think, Mr. Ames, think. Find a way. You can't just try. You have to succeed. And I mean have to. Policy, dear? Insurance policy? Uh, yes, not... it's uh, well, life insurance, uh, darling. It's, uh, it's an excellent new type of very attractive with double indemnity for accidental death. Oh, darling, it sounds so grim, so depressing. Must we talk about such things? Well, I thought I should explain it to you. I'd like to have it signed up today. Oh, don't explain. I believe I understand. You see, I'm not quite as innocent as you may think. I beg your pardon? I know some things, and I see right through you. Hello, really. We've been married so short a time, I was so carefree, and now so unexpectedly... Well, I, I, I don't understand you this. Don't fool me for a minute. Men like you are all alike. Your minds work overtime thinking of ways and means to provide security and protection for your wives. You're such a dear, Arthur. So thoughtful. Oh, well, uh, for a moment. Yes, of course. I simply no, feel, no, darling, No, no, that... no more talk of death, darling. Do whatever you think is right. I couldn't advise you anyway. Well, you see, this particular policy is a family one. Each of us becomes the beneficiary of the other. There are four pages of small print, which I'll explain to Darling, you. Darling, don't bother. I'll leave it to you. Just tell me what we have to sign, and we'll sign it. In just a moment, we will return for the second act of... Suspense. Oh, it's a magnificent view. You'll love it. How high is it? Oh, a couple of thousand feet. Oh, don't laugh at me, but I'm a little bit afraid. Afraid? Well, of height. Is it perfectly safe? Oh, I'll be with you, dear. I'll take care of you. There's a, a railing or something? Well, not at the spot I have in mind, but don't worry. Oh, you think I'm a sissy. Oh, no, no, not at all. But you've got to see this view by moonlight, I insist. Yes. See? We're almost at the top. Hmm. Nobody else in sight? Who deserted? No, most people don't come to this particular spot. That's why I like it. You want to share it with me. I understand. Mm. Well, end of the road. Now we walk a few feet. And then... Well, then you'll see. Uh, this way. Hey, that's I can hardly stand yeah, up. I'll take your arm, darling. There we are. 
Now, just a few steps to the edge. Oh, Arthur, we're too close. I'm holding you, darling. No. Here, right at the edge. That, that's where Arthur, the view is. No, I'm spinning. Don't grab me like that, no. dear. I, I, I've got you. I, I, I've got it's you. Back. Hello! Oh, thank goodness. We, we, we almost fell. Oh, come on, quickly. Let's get back to the car. Arthur, do you realize... When I think of what is... Come on, get into the car, please, and get us away from here. Ella. Ella, believe me, I, I had a good grip I on know, you. I know, I know. If I'd gone over the edge, you'd have fallen, too. Arthur, dearest, you could have been killed. In the world are you doing? Oh, I'm refitting the top steps on the cellar stair. They were loose. Oh, I'm sorry for the noise. I didn't expect you in so soon. I finished shopping early. Oh, you should have called the handyman, dear. Look at you. <laughs> Darling, something's wrong. You look so strange. Really? Well, anyway, it's finished. Steps finished. Oh. Oh, my back. Now, you see, you shouldn't have done this. Ooh. Unaccustomed type of activity, even for an athlete like you. Yes. Really hurts. I gotta sit a minute. Oh, and I teach you. Is it very bad? <laughs> kind of. Ella, I, I left a sweater down there. W would you mind? No, no, not a bit, dear. I'll run down. Arthur! Do you know what you did? You finished the top step and you forgot to put in the next two. I, I did? Well, aren't we lucky I saw that in time? I could have fallen down and broken my neck. Arthur, don't look so stricken. I'm not hurt. Everybody makes mistakes. In a moment, we will return for the third act of... Suspense. So I phoned you this afternoon, darling, as soon as I got word the cabin at Big Lake was available. I hope this hasn't rushed you too much. No, not too much, dear. He said you wanted us to leave right after dinner. He gave me plenty of time. Want coffee, dear? Thanks, thanks, yes. Uh, you uh, remember to tell Clarabelle that we wouldn't need her up there? I let her go right after you called. I told her she'd have three days off. Good, good. More fun to rough it ourselves in such a place. Is the lake really so beautiful? Oh, yes. It's magnificent. Perfect, in fact. And you said we'll have the whole area to ourselves? Mm hmm There's absolutely nobody up there right now. That's why we get the off-season rate, including the use of the boating equipment. Mm, sounds ideal. Oh, you can't imagine what it's like in a canoe in the middle of that lake. First thing tomorrow morning, you'll find out. Mm. Well, are we about ready? Long drive in the dark. Arthur, dear... You didn't have to pay in advance for the cabin. Why, uh, no. Not even a deposit? No, but... Well, I have to pay uh, eventually. What difference does it make? Thrift, darling. Thrift. See, I don't intend to go there alone. Alone? What is this? We're both going there. No, no, dear. No, you're not going anywhere. What? what? Oh, my poor dear Arthur. You're such an amateur... So inept and so foolishly brave, you persist in challenging professionals in their own field. First as a gambler. Well, uh, I, don't, I don't know what you mean. Oh, darling, I knew about that from the beginning. And then as a murderer, really, dear, it's pathetic. Those sadly obvious attempts, a cliff, a staircase, and now a canoe. Ella, no, no. And that, above that's... all, to choose as your first victim of all people, me, darling. You're my fifth. Well, Ella, what are you saying? That inevitable policy. Both of us insured. <sighs> Don't you see? I knew I could count on you for that. Ella, Ella, stop this. Stop it. Oh, I, 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 Don't try I, to get... Not, not anymore. Not after drinking that coffee. I prepared so carefully for you. It's too late. Henry couldn't get up. And before him, Clarence. And before him, William. Et cetera, dear. You see? I, 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 
kill you. Justice, dear, and you never could have. <laughs> Just to think, my nephew Herbert, who should by this time have known <sighs> better, thought you were a mistake. You monster. Oh, sir, that's not like you. I, it's almost rude. You know I've no head for business. And a lady must live. <laughs> Suspense. You've been listening to The Easy Victim, written for suspense by Harold Huber. Tonight's story were Elspeth Eric as Ella, Paul McGrath as Art, Bob Reddick as Herbert, and Leon Janney as Don. Produced and directed by Paul Roberts. Listen again next week when we return with Re Entry, a story of man's first flight into space. Another tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. On CBS Radio.